Almaden, California, a western community that is famous, famous for the curious metal mined in the mountains. Everyone knows about California's gold rush, Sutter's Mill, the 49ers, the birth of a new state. But what made it all possible was another, less well-known mining rush. It happened here, in the hills on San Jose's southern edges. Our mines were bigger than the biggest gold mines. Terry Sanislo is an interpreter at the New Almaden Mining Museum in San Jose. And ultimately, we made more money selling mercury than the biggest gold mine did selling gold. So everyone talks about the gold rush, but financially at least it a was A mercury the... rush, a mercury rush. 150 years ago, there were nine saloons on this little street, serving miners from as far away as Mexico, China, and England. They dug 40 miles of mining tunnels through the hills above town and pulled out thousands of pounds of cinnabar, a rock that contains mercury. But there wouldn't have been a mercury rush without the gold rush. During the gold rush days, miners used mercury to help them refine their gold. Mercury has an almost magical property. It can extract gold out of rock. In its peak years between 1850 and 1890, the New Almaden mine sold mercury to gold miners in the Sierra foothills who spread it over their gold ore. When that mixture of gold and mercury was heated in smelters, the mercury vaporized. And when you open their cooker pots left in the bottom was the powdery rock and sitting on top was you hoped, pure 24 karat sponge gold. But mercury has other special properties as well. And while it was a godsend for gold miners, it's left a toxic legacy here in the Bay Area, one that scientists are still trying to understand. Hello. Hello. We're inside a complex of labs and office buildings at the U.S. Geological Survey in Menlo Park, meeting with scientist Mark Marvin de Pasquale. In one hand, he's holding a reddish rock about the size of a golf ball. In the other, a small glass bottle containing a pea-sized drop of elemental mercury, like what you'd find in an old thermometer. Cinnabar. Mercury. It's not a lot of it, but we try to actually stay away from big balls of mercury around here. Di Pasquale works with tiny amounts of mercury, not teaspoons or ounces, but picograms. That's a trillionth of a gram. A uh, globule like this would really contaminate a laboratory for years. Uh, Elemental mercury is so not safe to handle, but what's hard. even more dangerous is a form of the metal called methylmercury. It's what happens to mercury when it gets eaten by bacteria in the dirt and starts making its way up the food chain. And that's where it becomes problematic, as it moves from the sediments to the water column, it begins to accumulate in phytoplankton and consumed by very tiny organisms that we call zooplankton, and then by smaller fish and larger fish and so on up the food chain. Less than a teaspoon of methylmercury can poison thousands of fish. When children or pregnant women eat that fish, the methylmercury can cause brain damage and developmental delays. So the goal is to remove the mercury before it even hits the water. That's what's happening here, just downstream of the former New Almaden mercury mines, which are now a county park. This is a, a before. I've been showing you afters. Here's a before, if you could follow me. Dave Drury is an engineer with the Santa Clara Valley Water District, in charge of cleaning up old mining waste. We're standing on a creek bank covered in what looks like concrete. You notice there's not much growing on it? Remember that other spot? We had nice tall grass and there were trees and stuff. Nothing grows in this. It grows on the edges. This is a deposit of mine waste. After miners extracted most of the mercury from the rocks, they dumped the waste rock into nearby streams. These rocks are harmless. You can't get mercury poisoning from handling them or from walking around the old mines. But over time, they can slowly leach mercury and eventually methyl mercury into the water. Scientists say about 200 pounds of mercury flow out of these streams every year and end up in the San Francisco Bay. It's an enormous amount given the toxicity of the metal. This is just one of the sources of mercury in the bay, but it's also one of the simplest to clean up. So the way to reduce methylmercury in fish is to prevent it from getting in the water in the first place because that's where your money is best spent. That's where you're going to make the biggest difference. Meanwhile, the bay is conducting its own cleanup as the tides slowly flush water and mercury out through the Golden Gate. At the current rate, that'll take a century or more until the bay's mercury levels are safe. Unless, that is, state officials succeed in their plan to speed up the process. We'll hear about that next week. For Quest, I'm Amy Standen, KQED Radio News.